Hi, my name is Lloyd Labatee. I'm the page and volunteer supervisor here at the Grandview Heights Public Library. Uh, welcome to our video book talks. The first and third of every uh, Friday of every month, we put on these book talks and recommend books to you uh, from that the staff has read. So let's get to it. Uh, the first one I would like to recommend, and I did this through, um, and one thing I would like to mention right now is some of our electronic sources, both uh, Libby as well as Hoopla. Uh, these are services that you can access either, you know, via your uh, tablet of some kind, iPad, your phone, uh, so long as it's a smartphone or a computer. Uh, I actually did this, uh, did this one through uh, Hoopla, and uh, it's one of my wife's favorites. Um, and since it's February, I figured oh, it's good romance. So anyway, I uh, hope you can see that with the, without too much glare is uh, Diana Gabaldon's uh, Outlander series. This is a television series that is on the Star Network. You can also get the television series here at your local library. Uh, anyway, uh, with this book, it's all about a woman named Claire and um, World War II ends and she and her husband finally kind of go on their first real honeymoon. Uh, also to kind of get reacquainted with each other in any way at, uh, as they're researching his family's history uh, in Scotland, she comes across a circle of stones, not Stonehenge, but something similar. And uh, she touches one of the stones, don't want to give away too much, and then is whisked 200 years into the past at the exact same location. And uh, of course, she's caught up in uh, the English and the Scottish kind of uh, you know, fighting with each other and to survive, she's taken in and kind of also goes with a Scottish family. And through the course of it, she meets a gentleman named uh, Jamie Fraser, and they develop a love of their own. And um, it's a great, wonderful series. Um, it's historical fiction. Um, it's kind of science fiction in the sense it's time travel, um, you know, but it's more a nature time travel with uh, the circle of stones and gems and things of that nature uh, instead of, uh, you know, science fiction, mechanical uh, time travel like Back to the Future or Doctor Who. And um, it really does have a wonderful romantic element to it uh, in terms of um, she's trying to get back to her husband, you know, at the end of World War II. At the same time, she's really found a wonderful love in Jamie Frazier you know, in the 1700s. And so it's, she's kind of torn, who do I stay with? And, um, you know, other things happen in the other books. Like I said, don't want to give too much away. But uh, if you like time travel, if you like romance, if you like uh, historical fiction, if you like Scotland, like any of those things are all combination, it's a book for you. Uh, my next book, continuing with February for uh, Black History Month is and once again, I always like to work in a comic book reference, is uh, right here, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Wings of Fury. Um, as you know, in comic books, they have different dimensions, earths, timelines, whatever you want to call them, depends on the story. But uh, in this one, this is actually a prequel to the Miles Morales game that you can play for PlayStation, and uh, which is now known as the Marvel Gamerverse. And uh, actually, as a lot, lifelong Marvel fan, I'm really beginning to enjoy the Gamerverse. Um, you know, they're really great at paying tribute to the classics of these, but at the same time, they're giving a fresh take on it. A lot of it takes place in modern day, which is wonderful. Uh, Miles Morales is the second person to uh, carry the Spider-Man identity. As you can see, his costume is a little different. Even here on the back, we have the original Peter Parker. Uh, Miles is uh, African Latino. His his mom is uh, Latina. His dad is African American, and um, he embraces both aspects of his culture on that. And it's I just think it's great how they work that into the story, his culture, uh, real world issues. He when he's out of costume, um, how he has to deal with certain mentalities of how he is treated. Example by the police when he is in costume versus when he is out of costume. Um, and he kind of gets it all the way around. Like they're, you know, police officers that love him as Miles, but don't like him as Spider-Man and vice versa. And, uh, you know, just 
once again, it has all the hallmarks of Spider-Man. Miles is a teenager. He's got to keep up at the, the Brooklyn Visions Academy. He's got to keep up with his homework. Uh, everyday high school problems that he faces, uh, problems and struggles and joys you face living in Brooklyn and Harlem and the five boroughs of New York, and then also all the superhero problems. And in this one, he kind of, it's a legacy because he also deals with the Vulture's um, underlings and the Vulture's granddaughter, in a sense, in a real neat twist. So it's, a pre like I said, prequel to the video game, but it totally stands alone as its own novel. Uh, my last one is kind of a unique take. Um, I wanted to do a nonfiction book for this, and since February, we've done the two big things, romance, black history. Uh, another thing is a lot of people who are not big romantic fans tend to go toward um, horror and uh, read, you know, Dracula, Frankenstein, or watch those movies. Um, plus, I wanted to do a nonfiction book, and I found one that fit that criteria. Uh, this is done by Grady Hendrix. Uh, in my last talk, I reviewed uh, another one of his books. I just think he's great for the horror genre. He's an author I've recently discovered. Um, he worked with a, another author on here. Um, and let me see here. Shoot, Eric. And um, anyway, this the whole point of this book is uh, Grady had the bigger name, I guess. So, but the whole point of this is he explores the history of why horror boomed in the 70s and 80s and why there was a big boom of it, especially with paperbacks and not hardcovers and how it, um, you know, kind of penetrated culture and uh, kind of got into everybody's mind, even if you weren't really an avid reader of it. And yet he finds some like very hidden lost gems. Um, I was trying to think, I even read one, uh, The Nest right here. Uh, it was later made into a movie um, that I had watched years ago, had no clue there was a connection. And, uh, and of course he covers the big names like Anne Rice and Stephen King and all this. So, um, if you're really not looking for black history, if you're not looking for romance, but you want some horror, Paperbacks from Hell is the place to go because you'll get a cool history on it and you'll get so many reading selections in here that I just don't have enough time to go over, but I recommend a lot of them. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Please tune in here on our YouTube channel and other social media platforms and uh, every first and third Friday of the month for more recommendations. Thank you for watching.